right, good morning. Um, today is day three of seven of the full liquid diet. And um, <clears throat> yesterday was hard, um, I guess physically, because you know, I had a headache. I felt like it was like a hunger headache. Um, the feeling of not being satisfied when I had meals was really, was really hard on me. Um, I made it through like throughout the, after I made my pinto bean broth, um, I made it through um, the rest of the day and um, ended up ending the night, you know, in a good place. Hold on, let me take this out. Um, end up ending the, the night in a good place um, where I was feeling more rejuvenated and more secure in the fact that like, okay, I can do this. Today, um, current time is uh, 9.36 a.m. Um, I have probably been up for an hour. Um, and today, um, so far, um, has been very emotional. Um, 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 just a lot of doubts, um, a lot of kind of triple guessing myself, um, about my decision and um i think it i'm not really sure where it stemmed from maybe it is normal oh gosh hold on okay um maybe it's normal to maybe you have phases that you go through in the in the journey where it's like Day one, you're excited. Day two, you know, it's like the physical hunger. Day three, it's like emotional. I don't know. Maybe it's not as prescriptive, but maybe the different phases, like the emotional phases that you go through, whether those emotions are good or, you know, um, hard. Um, so I'm not going to say bad. I, I will say hard. Um, however hard, look, whatever hard looks like for you. Maybe, maybe it's normal. Um it is your mind coming to the acceptance that, listen, there's going to be a new normal from how, you know, things usually go. And I don't know, maybe this is all part of the process. I'm not sure. I just want to make sure I'm a planner. Give me a second. I'm a planner. I've always had to be a planner all of my adult life because I had my oldest son at a young age. And um, I had to adopt the kind of motto and mindset of <laughs> I've always had to adopt the motto or the mindset that we cannot fail I cannot fail the decisions that I make in my life cannot cause him to fail he's 21 now and His dad was tragically taken from us before, I always say, you know, before his, his color even changed. He was about a month old and I was thrust into a position where it's just me. So get housing that I can be proud to raise him in, get a job that will help us to sustain a respectable lifestyle and something that he can look back at. And when he had, you know, he's recounting his childhood memories. Um, 
You know, they're good ones. Um, be careful about, you know, who you date and, oh, wow, well, okay. And then I went through a, a stage of, this little boy deserves a dad. I need to find him a quality father figure. I need to find me a quality mate. And it's just, I'm just saying these things just so, so that you get a glimpse into the mindset behind how I don't come to decisions lightly. And I will form a plan of action, completely do a SWOT analysis in my mind. Um, you know, what are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? Where are the opportunities? Where are the threats? And that, I guess, form of planning almost became an obsession, I guess, because I was obsessed with just not failing. And, um, And I feel like I've done an amazing job. God has really brought, not only brought me a long way, brought us a long way, but he sustained us through a lot. A lot where if it weren't for him, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here mentally. I probably wouldn't be here physically because there were so many times where I just like, I just want to give up. This is not... <laughs> The, the life that I had planned for me. But, you know, the saying, you know, when you make plans, you know, write them in, pen, write them in pencil and give God the eraser kind of thing. So, um, God has sustained me and brought me a, long, a mighty long way. I don't take that lightly. I tell God, thank you every single day. I try to take every opportunity that I can to um, share my testimony with somebody else. Um, the young parents who have come up behind me, hey, <laughs> sis, bro, think about this, or be encouraged, or it's not gonna look like this all the time. Um, so, anyway, um, with this decision, I came to this decision because the different, um, weight-related, lifestyle-related aches or pains that only I'm aware of. You know, bending down to pick something up and my back is hurting. Standing up and my back is hurting. Um, reports that I got from the doctor, um, you know, hearing stuff like fatty liver disease and high blood pressure. And um, then I started developing um, an issue with my heart, where my heart just does this weird beat. And... At first, it was like not, it was noticeable, but it wasn't like constant. And now it's to the point where it happens all the time. It's like this, it, it feels like it skips a beat. So when I do this and put my fingers on my pulse, it's like, it'll go boom, 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 boom like that. And that, that, that pause, that irregular pause, when that happens, it, it makes me go and kind of like lose my breath and it shoots like this pressure. It feels like the pressure goes just like this and it hurts. And when it gets up here, it feels like migraine pain. And then as the my heart beat, you know, gets back to a regular beat, then it slowly subsides. The pain from my head slowly subsides. But now that's starting to happen more often and more often. And um, that is very scary. Just did it again. It is very scary. Um, and I did it again. Um, 
I don't know what that is. When I went to my last uh, nutrition appointment um, that morning, I had a horrible, 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 horrible headache. I mean, the whole ride over there, my head was hurting so badly. And when I got there, um, the normal procedures that we weigh in, um, I weighed in and when I went to like, just look down, I, I was like debating the whole way there. I was like, I'm going to say something. I'm going to ask them if they could just check my blood pressure and just make sure everything is okay. Um, because I just feel a little off. Like I was able to like hear my heartbeat. Like it felt like it was, my heartbeat was doing this in my ears. And so I was like, I feel like my blood pressure is up. Um, so the whole way over there, I was like, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. And then when I got there, so everybody's like smiling faces. I was like, nah, I'm not going to say anything. And then when it was like my turn to get up on the scale and weigh in, um, when I took my shoes off and I had to look down and take my shoes off, oh my God, the pressure that I felt in my head was like ridiculous. And I just, I was like, I can't not say anything. So I said, hey, I said, um, this is to the, um, to the nutritionist that was weighing and saying, I said, hey, um, my head is really hurting. I feel like my blood pressure is up. W would it be possible for me to um, go over to the office and, which is there like literally next door, um, and get my, my blood pressure checked? I said, I just wanna make sure everything is okay. And God bless her, she stopped everything she was doing. Um, there was two line, there were two lines going, so I didn't like hold up the line or anything. And I was like second to last anyway. Um, but she stopped everything she was doing and walked me over to the office and was and got my blood pressure checked. And sure enough, it was high. It was 169 over 119. Um, and uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's just a lot. I am, what I'm basically getting at is that This is a big decision. It's not one that I came to lightly. It's also one that I wanna make sure does not cause me to fail in terms of my plans or my goals I guess I should say my goals, not my plans, my goals for my life or for my children, um, especially with my youngest son. My oldest is out of the house. He's on his own. He's an adult. Um, my youngest is eight. He still very much depends on me. The decisions that I make, they have to be well thought out and very calculated. I'm at the crossroads today where am I making the right decision? Should I get a trainer and do this the more conventional way? I've tried the more conventional way. I want to make sure that I say I have had a trainer in the past and it I would lose weight, but it wasn't something that was sustainable for me. I was the most successful weight loss journey that I've had on my own is when I um, started keto. I started keto um, in August, no, October of 2020. And I also incorporated intermittent fasting. So I would go from the moment I woke up till about um, 6.30 and not eat. I would drink water that whole entire time period. And then at five o'clock when I logged out, I um, would start my exercise. I would exercise. I started out, I think I started out like 15 minutes a day. By the end of the week, the first week, I had progressed to 30 minutes a day. By the end of the second week, I was able to, um, I had built my endurance up to where I could go for an hour. 
And then after I would work out, I would go take my shower. While I'm taking my shower, I would go ahead and make my keto meal. Um, if I get out of the shower, my meal was my, my prize and I would eat dinner. And then that would be the last thing that I would eat that night. First thing and the last thing that I would eat that night, I would have it with um, keto friendly fruit, which those are hard to come by. So it's either like a cup, as far as measurement, a cup of cut cantaloupe or honeydew. I kept that on hand, which was really good. Um, strawberries were okay. Um, I personally prefer the honeydew or the cantaloupe um, with that meal. And then that was it. I would rinse and repeat the next day. And I did that for about almost four months and I lost over 40 pounds. And when I saw those pictures, I don't know if I was scrolling through my pictures. I think I was scrolling through my pictures like last night once I got into bed. And I came across that picture of myself and my weight size and the joy that seemed to radiate on my face. It felt like, this is, this is good. Like, that's the weight that looks good on me. This weight does not look good on me. And not only does it not look good on me, it doesn't feel good on me. So my dilemma today is be sure about what you're doing. There's no undo button. I spend a lot of time online um, working and, you know, creating spreadsheets or PowerPoints or sending emails. And there's that little undo button at the top of the left-hand corner of the page. And, I, you know, if you make a mistake, you can always undo it. There is no undo button with this procedure, with this VSG journey with any weight loss surgery journey. You cannot undo it. Once they cut your the, the two thirds of your stomach out, that's it. They cannot go back later and sew it back together and you resume life as the normal that you were accustomed to. But my dilemma is what what I need to be 100% sure. One thing that my son brought up was like, well, that's why the doctors send you through all of those counseling sessions and this and that. And it was just like, wait, but the program that I was in, um, the program that um, my, surgeon, my surgeon's clinic offers has one counseling session. I don't know that that might have something to, I don't know if it had, from the research that I've done, some, I've heard people sometimes say that it has something to do with your insurance or whatever. But the plan that's laid out in that big thick binder that they gave us, um, you have four nutrition classes, one counseling session. Those nutrition classes are spread out over several um, you know, weeks and months. Um, the one counseling session that you have, I had the one and go in the assessments the pre-assessments that I take I took on the computer before my session started was longer than the length of time that I spoke with the counselor hold on one second the questions that she asked me or the time that I had available to talk were when she was asking me questions well where did you grow up what do you do for a living how many kids do you have are you involved with the children's father um, are you married? Um, given she's writing a biography on me and trying to get the the details. Outside of that, that was it. There was no real counseling session. And that was the only one that I was required to have. Nutrition classes are just that. They're just teaching you about food, about developing a healthy relationship with food, about getting you to rethink the current relationship that you have about food. Um, it is in a classroom setting. There were 15 and 20 people in there. So it is an educational session and that's it. So, I mean, and then you have the you know, your initial visit with the surgeon where he's telling you what your options are, giving you information so that you can go home and make an informed decision. He gives you a recommendation based on what you say your goals are. And then he sends you home with the um, homework of now, based on my recommendation, you decide on which surgery you feel like is best for you. And um, 
Then between that visit, you have your, I think it's two or three other nutrition classes. And then after that, your third nutrition class, you have another meeting with him, which is called the decision visit, where you tell him or her, sorry, which surgery you've decided to go with. They take that and they send it through your insurance and they find out if there's any co-pays or what your financial obligations are to that. And then if you, you know, once that's satisfied, then they schedule your surgery. And then after they schedule your surgery, you have your fourth and final nutrition class. And it's basically a recap of um, everything. They set expectations and then that's it. They um, schedule based on your BMI, whether or not you um, need to go on a full liquid diet prior to surgery or not. And then that's it. Then the surgery day is scheduled and then every, every day after that is taken down. So that's where I am today. I want to, I want to make sure that the lifestyle that I'm getting ready to sign up for is one that is truly conducive to my life and what I need. I feel like it is, but I don't want to make a mistake. In all transparency, my mind is saying, maybe you should try keto one more time. Maybe you should. Try another way. And I, and I have, I've tried other ways. And I really feel like I gave it my best shot. But then when I get frustrated, not frustrated, but when I get those cravings to eat what I'm used to eating, because you think about, I'm 39, you think about 30 plus years of eating what you want to eat versus the four months, three, four months that you buckle down and say, this is what you are allowing yourself to eat. Those 30 months are going to trump, those 30 months of habits are going to trump those four months of habits. Um, so you're more inclined to fall back to, I'm more inclined to fall back to old habits and I want to change that and I'm just I'm just it that this is what's in my mind so the same way I feel like I'm kind of talking in I feel like I've laid out what my dilemma is what you know and what my challenge is for the day um and now I just need to determine whether this is is this a normal part of the process or is this that still small voice telling me like, try it another way. Try, try it one more time. But that's where I am, if I'm being honest. And now the time now is 10.02. I've not had any protein today uh, because I've gotten very emotional. I am feeling a little sick on the stomach, a little bit. My head hurts a little bit. You know how your head kind of hurts after you cry, which is why I hate crying. Um, and I really debated whether or not to even make this video, but I want to make sure I'm not just showing the good parts. I want to show every part. I want to remind myself of every part. So whatever my finish line looks like, I can look back at it and say, nah, sis, you worked your butt off. Like, you you did the work. You went through every emotion. You allowed yourself to feel every emotion. You were honest with yourself. And more importantly, you were, or just as importantly, you were honest with others who are looking at your journey, wanting or trying to decide whether what's best for them to move forward. So, um, I am, I have, in, in my walk with Christ, I've really gotten better at coming to these crossroads and fully admitting, 
God, I don't know. Because I really feel like as his children, he cares enough about us to where he doesn't want us to know. He wants us to trust him. What he does want us to know is when it's time to lay your burdens down at his feet. Pick up the peace that he that he gives us, that he gives to us. That's his gift to us. And then let him handle the rest. And this is me throwing my hands up in full surrender, saying, God, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I really don't know. I'm very conflicted. I need your peace. I need your guidance. And in the meantime, here is everything I'm dealing with. Everything you know before I even say it, but you still want me to ask you. You still want me to trust you enough to just say it, to ask you. And I'm here. I'm asking, I don't know. I don't know what you want me to do. But I need you. I need you in this moment. I need you today. I need you forever. <laughs> I need you to sustain me. I need you to guide me. I need your direction for my life. You are within me. And because you are within me, I will not fail. That's all I got for the day. I need to take some time to be still. I've prayed, and the most important thing after prayer is to then be still and wait for an answer. So while I wait, I will just continue to continue to pray and get a scripture in my heart, get a song in my heart. Every time I feel these thoughts creeping up, I can lean on that. And I just trust and believe that God is going to lead me to the decision that's right for me. And that's all I can do. Okay. I'll be back later in the day. But that's all I have for now. So if you've gotten this far in the video, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, 